It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. Well, a good morning to you out there. Thank you so much for taking the time to join in. It is the Fish Florida Show. I am your host, Riscala. I also have my co-host on with me this morning. She is one of the top female kayak anglers here in Florida. Her name is Pam Worth, and we'll bring her on in just a moment. We've got a variety of guests again this morning uh, to share with you all kinds of things. First, I want to just quickly go over. Uh, I looked at the... Um, every morning that we do the, the show, uh, I... Do a quick look down on the uh, the radar and, and the beach conditions and things like that. And I was kind of curious this morning as to what was happening because I've got kind of a probably a 10 to 15 mile breeze out here where I'm at. I'm probably 20 miles by the way the crow flies from the from the ocean. And uh, the uh, NOAA weather radio says, <laughs> not that I doubt them, I just uh, have a hard time imagining it. it says uh, east winds 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet. I'm having a Hard time imagining that the seas are two to three feet with what we've got out here. Uh, and then uh, later on, the nine dales sell down a little bit. The um, the beaches here on the west coast are issuing a uh, uh, risk, uh, uh, excuse me, a uh, riptide warning that uh, we have a high risk of riptide current here on the west coast. Again, I think this is all due to the the wind. We this last week has just been one. One windy week, I, you know, every time I went out, it was kite flying weather. So uh, be careful if you get out there to the beach today. I, I don't hold a lot of faith in what they're telling me from the NOAA weather radio regarding the, mo- the uh, oceans with, uh, with the wind that, the way that it is. But I'm going to take it for what it's worth and pass it on to you. Anyway, good morning, Miss Pam, and welcome to the show. Thanks for joining in. Good, good morning. Good morning. I checked the weather over here on the West Coast. And they just showed a photo of Clearwater Beach, and it's flat calm. It looks like a lake out there. Wow. I just want to let you know on the West Coast right now, it is flat calm. And the radar, uh, when I checked the radar, it shows little to no activity uh, all around the state. So it looks like it's going to be a clear day, maybe a windy day, but it's going to be a clear day. So there's always a uh, an excuse to go out and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Yeah, the wind will keep you cooler. It's supposed to be over in the high 90s, like 95 uh, this afternoon. Wow. On the West Coast. So, yeah, find some shade and stay hydrated. Yeah, got to make sure you got lots of water. Uh, And my goodness, 95. You know, uh, what I have found is if they tell you it's 95, the realistic uh, number is probably two or three degrees higher than that. That's just what they want. That's just what they want you to believe is 95. I mean, there's days they tell me. Oh, the weather outside is 78 degrees or 79 degrees. I go out into, I have a thermostat outside and under the shade. Well, I did. It's gone now. But it would be in the shade. They're saying 78, 79. In the shade, it's like 82, 83, 84, you know. <laughs> so I don't know yeah, where to get well, the numbers. Know, the, the, the more inland you get, the hotter it gets. I, I don't True. know where these yeah. uh, official weather towers are. But maybe they're closer to the beaches where they get some wind. That's what I'm thinking, because the difference is, uh, you know, like I say, it could be as many as five degrees in, uh, in the difference. Anyway, we missed you last week. You were out doing your thing, and let's talk a little bit about what happened last week. Okay. I was up in an area called Crystal River. That's what I which thought. Which is yeah. absolutely beautiful. It is such a beautiful area up there. And the IFA, the Inshore Fishing Association, had its tournament. Originally, it was supposed to be here in the Tampa Bay area where I have good phone reception and I could call in. But because of the ban on harvesting of redfish, trout, and snook in this area, they moved it north. Now, it wouldn't really affect the kayaks because we're a catch, photograph, and release. We go by inches. But the boats go by weight, so they have to call or bring their live redfish in to weigh in. And FWC said, since there's no harvesting and there's a chance of death by bringing the fish in, we're not going to sanction the right for you to call in that area. So they had to move up to Crystal River, which was great. We had a good turnout. Um, we got to fish new area. Um, it, it was a good time. I got I had to learn a new area real quickly, but I had a blast. I had a good time. No one knew you probably put them all to shame. <laughs> I did okay. Get her out of here. She's getting all the fish. (laughs) 
Uh, I couldn't find the redfish I wanted, but I still beat, uh, I still ended up top lady and uh, kind of in the middle of the pack. So it wasn't my best day out there. And I think I left all my big fish mojo in Panama. <laughs> I have not caught a monster fish since Panama. <laughs> so I'm not familiar. I at Adam. I'm not familiar at all with Crystal River. Is it actually a river or is it just called that? Well, there is a river up there called Crystal River, which is spring fed. That's why the water is so clear. Mm -hmm. Is that and, where you um, is that where you were? It's north it's north of Homosassa, which is also known for very crystal clear yeah. water. Yep. So yeah, north of Homosassa. It's it's a beautiful area. The plantation is up there. Um, Mike Anderson goes out of that area with his T V show goes out of that area a lot, as well as C. A. Richards both go out of that area a lot. And C C A CCA has let extra tagged redfish in that area. So uh, might be an area people want to learn to fish. So, uh, I, I, But I'm not clear. Is it actually where you were fishing? Is it actually a river, kind of like a bay or what? No, I was fishing the bay. Okay, so. I was fishing the bay. Yeah. It, it, I know that uh, when we're talking about home assassin and places like that, the water is just absolutely clear. And that's fresh water. So somewhere along the line it changes to salt water? because it, it leads out into the, you know. Into oh, the bay, okay, so okay. Now I see what you're saying. All little right. by little. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, that little make by sense. little. Okay. But it's like um, we have a big city here called Clearwater, and there's no clear water. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, it's the name of the city. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering about the Crystal River thing. Was it really a, an actual, well, where you is, were fishing, you know, an actual river yeah, or the bay? Yeah, there is a river. Yeah, it is a river, and like most rivers in Florida, they do end up either in the Atlantic or the Bay sooner or later. And that's where you were? Yes. And are I was there... in the Bay side in an area called Ozella, which was a little, it's a little north of Homosassa and a little south of Crystal River. But I had a good time. Cool. And yeah. what, 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 what was the winner? Um, Derek... Ingalls was the winner. He's won or placed top three, I think, in the last ten tournaments. <laughs> Good gravy. What, yeah, what, no, he's, he's, an, he's a great angler, and he fishes out of a boat, out of a ginu, and out of a kayak. So he spends a ton of water, a ton of time on the water. He's really wow. a very good angler. What what did he get to win, though? That's, that was, what did he catch? What was the winning catch? Oh, uh, the goal is a redfish and a trout. I think his redfish was 28, hmm. maybe 29, and I think his trout was 24. Wow. Yeah, and so was a great catch. Was, was this um, a monetary win, or was it just a, a trophy, or what? What do you, what do you get oh, yeah, when he you won? Close to, he, he won close to, I think it was like 1,500. Wow. Five tournaments are big money. But, nice. Yeah, he went close to fifteen hundred. You know, it's nothing like going out and doing what you love, fishing, and then getting paid to do it. <laughs> and that's like icing on the yeah. cake there now. Wow. Well, it's never if you enjoy it, no matter what you're doing, they say if you enjoy it, it's never work. That's true. That's true. So what have you got well, you, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. Sorry? You were gonna say something I'm I'm gonna gonna say, Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say so all you young folks out there. Make sure you pick your studies correctly, and make sure you study something you enjoy. True. Make your life a heck of a lot easier as you go down the road, that's for sure. Yep. So I was going to ask you, what have you got planned now? Um, is the Pompano thing coming up? You had something going yes, on it in is. It, Yeah, June um, 20th is the Extreme Offshore Tournament. Yeah, we should uh, give uh, Joe a holler. So that's in a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to, and have, that's, uh, have to have him last on. Last year he had almost he had almost 200 kayaks there. Wow. And uh, it's really interesting. You get to see, if you get there first thing in the morning when we all launch, because um, we're all lined up on the beach, it's real interesting to look at everybody's kayaks. Everybody's, I don't care, out of 120 or 200 kayaks, every single kayak is set up a little differently. And uh, it's real interesting to look at them all. Some people are min minimalist. Some people have all the bells and whistles. And it's just kind of fun to look at them. 
every you know we're there we'll answer any questions you know as we're getting our boat ready to go hot dog so drop on by 200 yeah. um i'd like to see an aerial of that i, I bet that would be pretty impressive 200 kayaks out there fishing especially during the launch when 200 two, everybody leaves at the same time right that is correct <laughs> that would be a heck of a sight 200 people all launching off at the yeah, same I, time i think he did get a little bit of a one of the videos he put together i do remember an aerial and to me looking at it it looked like an easter egg basket you know how an easter yeah, egg basket yeah. has all the colorful eggs and it, wow. that's what it looked like Cause most kayaks are fairly brightly colored mm -hmm. wow well i think i have mr robert with uh, florida fisherman magazine are you there mr robert well, it looks like I am. Did. I had to unmute my phone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's a miracle, I tell you. It's a miracle. How are you, Robert? Good morning, sir. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Go ahead, Pam. Fantastic. I'm, st yeah. I'm still kind of uh, um, in between waking up and, and awake. Yeah, I was I was actually, just before I, I called in, I was on the, uh, on the phone with uh, Lou uh, Sibley. She's our editor. And and David is sick, so she's going to be doing her that segment by herself. So okay, just to let you know. Well, we certainly It'll hope be David gets better quickly. That we'll, we'll be doing that segment. <coughs> uh, David's not feeling real well, so I'm sorry to hear that. Wish him well. Yeah. Well, so he went back to bed, and Lindsay's going to do the show. So. Oh, hot dog! Um, so let's talk a little bit about what's happened this last week. Uh, any activity that you're aware of? Well, the uh, obviously this wind that's come up the last yeah. few days has, oh. has uh, changed things a little bit. But yeah. uh, prior to that, the fishing up in this area, uh, the inshore fishing was great. The offshore fishing was uh, there were some strange currents going on out there. Some some currents that ran against each other out there. You got an upper and a lower current and running in opposite directions. But uh, the the bottom fishing was okay. The the mahi seemed to have vanished here for a little bit. Uh, I don't know why. Nobody ever knows why. They they just sort of roam. But uh, but it looks like they certainly are finding them down south. Um, I don't know if you follow all the stuff that goes on every day, but the um, the keys are are picking up lots of mahi. Huh? And then once the further up north you get, they they seem to be a little less, uh, a, le a little less sporadic. You know, they're very sporadic as to where they are right now. They're they're sort of spread out, and they're they're catching them up in northern Florida too, and off to Carolina. So, is that unusual to be that far north? Yeah, I, I would think that's unusual to be that far north. My gosh. I wonder what's causing it. Now, you said something that caught my ears. There's an upper and a lower current. Is that the Gulf Stream you're yeah. talking about? Well, no, it just depends on where you are. But, no, there's there's currents that run on the bottom, and there's currents that run, you know, the one that you and I are used to, the one that, you know, the tide goes in and out, and there's current that runs and all of that. But, uh, no, there are there are definitely upper and lower currents, and... When they start running in opposite directions, it, it causes odd things to happen with hmm. the fishing. So. I can imagine. I, I never thought about that. Uh, an upper and a lower. I always, you and know, I just figured when if. Those, when those uh, lower, when the lower ones get to where they're really cranking, it also screws up the fishing. So if you've got the your, your lower current running at, you know, six or eight knots, it makes holding the bottom ridiculous. First of all, if you're bottom fishing, you you got to put like a pound of weight on there just to hold the bottom. So. <laughs> I got to fish. I got to fish. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's my, that's my sinker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, it's a, an interesting thought. It's something I never really considered. I, I figured if the top of the water is running in one direction, the bottom of the water's, you know, going the same thing. Uh, so but that, anybody looking for snook, your season's about to end, so. Any, uh tournaments that you're aware of? I know this is kind of getting into the term season now, right? With all the tournaments? Well, they're going on everywhere. I yeah. mean, just uh, go to the FWC's page and, you know, there's there's a tournament postings there and there's tournament postings at uh, Summer Warren's. We're going to have uh, Summer on. Tales. Yep, we're going to have Summer on today. She's going to give us a lowdown what's yeah. going on with her. 
Yeah, well, she she's normally got a pretty good uh, grasp on what tournaments are going on. She's she does probably the best tournaments I've ever seen. So cool. Hers are phenomenal. You know, there's there's stuff for the kids to do. There's stuff for yeah. They're just they're done correctly. That's for sure. So. Well, when when you talk about stuff for kids to do, that's one of the heartstrings for me is to try to get them away from all the technology that they're subjected to. My gosh, in some cases, 18 hours, 20 hours a day. Uh, get them away from that for a little while. Have them enjoy what Absolutely. God has given us. You know, we've got this gorgeous uh, place that uh, we call Florida and water on three sides. If you don't like water, you're in the wrong, in the wrong place. <laughs> Yeah, try Iowa. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go go towards the middle of the United States or something. But uh, you know, we we're our peninsula. We've got water on three sides. It's something that I grew up enjoying, and uh, for me, it was a way for our family to go out and do something that we all like to do, and that would happen to be fishing. That's why I like doing the show. And two reasons, uh, well, many reasons, but another reason that comes to mind is uh, I'm learning. I'm always. I never thought about the current on the top and a current on the bottom. I, I know that's pretty straightforward if, if you think about it, but I never really considered that. I just figured if the water on the top was going whatever direction it was, the water on the bottom well, is doing the same thing. The thing that you're going to find is that, you know, as the summer heats up, is the water temperature has a great great deal of effect on the fishing. I remember a couple of years back, uh, my friend Jorge Pinero and I were out in the Keys. We were just out yellowtail fishing. We were just going to go out for a couple of hours and see if we could get some yellowtail for dinner. And the water temperature was over 90 degrees. What? Well, yeah. The wow. yellowtail wouldn't come all the way to the top. We had to chum bag out. We were throwing oatmeal at them and everything. They, wouldn't, they, wouldn't get, they would only come up to about 10, 12 feet. And then it was like, nah, it's too hot up there. I'm not going. So. Wow. I, I'm, but I, I knew that it would warm up, but I never heard of it getting to 90. Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pam, do you, I know this is going to be a silly question, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do you check the temperature of the water where you're at? Yeah, I do. Um, it it changes more in the winter than the summer because it'll change the redfish and the snook bite. Uh, colder weather is, or colder water is definitely going to be a slower bite. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, in the summer, it's it's just hot. <laughs> I mean, especially you figure we have a low bay in the Gulf yeah. and the water doesn't exchange as much as it does in the Atlantic. So, uh, I do more fishing first thing in the morning or I enjoy night fishing. That's I really love, a lot of fun. I love night fishing on a full moon when it's calm. Oh yeah. my goodness. There's night just, fishing in the summer is great. There's just nothing it like, is, it yeah. to me, I was just going to say it is so much fun. It is so much fun. There's it is, nothing it's pretty out there. You don't have all the boats. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice. cool. It's nice and cool, uh, and, and it has a, 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 an atmosphere of. It's just difficult for me to find words to describe. It's just a very calming, soothing atmosphere under a full moon, and you see the reflection in the water. And you might be three, four, five miles offshore, um, drifting, and and it's like being in a big puddle. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Yeah, when, when we lived in Key West, I used to actually go out on the Greyhound. They used to run, the, it's a big party boat, drift boat. And uh, I used to go out with them when they would do their night things. I didn't even go fishing. I'd just go out with the captain mm -hmm. and hang out up on the bridge just to look yeah. at it. It was gorgeous out yeah. there. So. It is, it well, they is. Have areas in, they have areas in St. Pete that still have coyotes. And if you go out night fishing on a full moon, um, you can hear them in a certain area. It's, wow. it's a little eerie. Yeah, it's a little eerie, but uh, to have them all start to howl at the same time. Wow. Uh, yeah. It, it, I mean, the only downside is occasionally you'll run into bugs, but the upside is so much better. The bite is, is outrageous. And like you said, you're not bumping into anybody else out there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say don't do it by yourself, especially, no, you know, I kayak, so always have a buddy and you know, that type of thing, and, and give a float plan to somebody who knows the area. But, uh, it, have an Atlas fun. Tracks it's with fun. you. Our club is going to do one in July. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. 
All right, well, we're up against that magic moment. That's what happens when you're having fun. It literally flies by. Now, Robert, you, uh, I give you an open invitation. You can hang on with us or you can come back because yeah, we're going to have... Yeah, Stephanie's coming on. I just want to say hello. So. Okay, great. Yeah, Stephanie, we'll be, we'll be hearing from her in just a moment. In the meantime, it's that, uh, that magic moment. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Briscella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today grace has some pretty stellar arms like serena williams good but her face is pretty disgusting someone please tell him to go back into his closet and leave us alone Brittany's face is so stupid and i hate her so much it's like a scientist created her in a lab to annoy humanity and didn't even do that good of a job Megan reminds me of a troll doll that came to life intent on killing us with her stupidity. Why is Grace's head so big? It definitely has nothing to do with how smart she is and probably everything to do with how bloated she is. He's so funny. Just kidding. Who would find this disfigured flamingo funny? Never post a selfie of yourself. You look so ugly. The only reason you have so many views is because we think you're a freak and we can't look away. Megan is the main reason that the world sucks so much. I would rather get cancer than listen to another Trevor Moran song. You are a mistake. You should have never been born. Drown yourself in a shallow puddle, please. Wow, I hope she's sterile. These really stopped being funny a long time ago. You're so much more than the things that people say about you. Those people have no right to say cruel things to you to make themselves feel better. It's okay that you sound different than everyone else. That's what makes you so special. We will not tolerate it. 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 Every day, people make me feel like I stand out simply because of the way that I look. Every day, people make me feel small. Every day, I face the cruel words of bullying. And every day, people tell me that I'm brave for enduring this humiliation. But we're not the brave ones. It's the ones that say no to the bullying. The witnesses. If we all join together, there's nothing that we can't do. We will no longer be the silent majority. When we see bullying online, we will let the world know that we're going to take action with the eye. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. Our actions will overpower cruel words. I am a witness. 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 There is power in words. But it's nothing compared to the power of the actions that we put behind our words. Visit eyewitnessbullying.org to learn more. I am a witness and so are you. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. Uh, Good morning to you if you're just joining. It is the Fish Florida Show. I am your host, Riscola. This morning, I have Pam Worth. She's one of the top female kayak anglers joining with me. She is my usual co-host. Missed her last week. She was up 
putting everybody to shame up there in the Crystal River area. And uh, hopefully we've got some fish left over. <laughs> so uh, welcome back, Miss Pam. And I have also, I have Robert Warner with the Floor Fishman Magazine on with me. And uh, we'll be hearing, hopefully we'll be hearing from uh, Miss Stephanie Lynn here in just a few moments as well. Um, let's see, I was going to mention that... Um, as many people know, this is Memorial Day weekend. We have uh, tomorrow will be Memorial Day, so when we remember those who have given their lives uh, out of respect to the rest of us who are still here to uh, for our freedoms. And uh, one of the things I want to do, I'll play it in a few minutes. I have a special song in memoriam of those who have paid the ultimate price and the families. Uh, something that we don't mention very often: the families of these people. Uh, that pay the price as well. They're a, a very, very heavy and, and costly price. And uh, ever so grateful for each of them that do what they do. So I believe we have Miss uh, Stephanie Lynn on with us. Good morning, Miss Stephanie. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Stephanie. Um, hi, good morning. I'm doing excellent. How are you? I'm doing good. And we have, so we have Pam, we have Robert, and we have Stephanie. And, and I had asked Stephanie to come on because I wanted her to share something that really, really touched me. Um, you were out spearfishing and you decided, I don't know where it was, it was one of the islands or something, I think. You're out spearfishing and you got some fish and you gave the fish to the locals, right? Yeah, correct. So I just got back from Panama and I was there with a group. And all of us are really big about the whole concept of ocean to table and giving back to the local communities where we go to travel and spearfish. So we, our panga driver was very active in the community and with one of these local orphanages in particular. And they actually hadn't gotten their money for the month. So they had sold some of the kids' clothes to mm. feed the children. So we decided collectively as a group to take some of the fish we had speared and bring them to the kids and we brought a couple snapper that were whole so they could play with the fish and it was um really rewarding really fulfilling just to be able to give back to the community in that way you're an amazing young lady i think you're in your 20s um i'm actually 32 yeah can we clone you a couple of million times because we could sure use a generation like you not only We're are you, working on you know, it for sure there's a lot of great people um in the upcoming generation especially in the spear fishing and fishing community so I'm very hopeful for the future. And brave. You're very brave. I see the picture. I keep thinking of the picture of you with, I think it was a tiger shark. It's twice your length. <laughs> swimming along with this tiger shark like it was a minnow. Like, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, the sharks are really uh, interesting to me and really awesome creatures, very curious creatures. And um, that's, they're the least of my worries when I'm in the ocean. Definitely not afraid of the sharks. I want to mention what I'm yeah, thinking about it. An, another great article for the magazine. I just finished it the other day. Oh, for cool. the upcoming issue, and uh, she's our underwater editor. She does a phenomenal job. And anybody who has not seen the video of her sitting at a piano in the Bahamas, that is awesome. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful to see. So there she is on the bottom. I, I was going to ask you about where that was shot because the water was so clear. Uh, there she is sitting on the bottom of the ocean with a piano. Uh, pretending like she's playing the piano, but you have to see the picture. No matter how I describe it, it doesn't do it justice. It is just <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you. That was that was a fun shoot. We were uh, shooting for a French TV show um, for, that was highlighting Andre Musgrove, who's a photographer in the Bahamas. And that spot in particular, it's only about 15, 20 feet deep, but it tends to have ripping current. So getting the shot was, was fun and challenging, and Andre and I had to work as a team, but we were really happy with the results. And and uh, I, I wanted to mention that when she was swimming with the shark, it's not like some some of these divers that you see they got a full suit on and tanks, and she's swimming. <laughs> she's swimming. What do you, what do you call it? The snorkeling. She's she doesn't even have tanks. <laughs> yeah, no tanks. I do free diving mainly. I, I'm also a scuba diver, but mostly free diving. So it's diving down using breath holding techniques without any air assist. So I'm just diving with sharks and bikinis. <laughs> And, and how did you... Stephanie's a free dive instructor. She does a class. Oh. I do. Yes, I do. I teach free diving. I'm a Patty level one and level two uh, free dive instructor. I'm curious how you were able to sit in the chair underwater like that and, and pretend like you're playing the piano. <laughs> the body naturally yeah, I, wants to float up, right? Doesn't it naturally? Yeah. 
I've gotten that question a lot, actually. So the the way that I did that shot is I wanted to be able to stay down there a pretty long time for Andre to film it. So what I did is I swam down with no fins on uh, in the this yellow dress with a mask on so I could see where I was going, swam down, and then I actually shoved my knees under the piano so if you oh. look at my legs you can see my my toes are really yeah. pushing against the ground and my knees are shoved under the piano oh, and I then see. i would just pull my mask off that was cool my hair and get the shot cool <laughs> yeah. shot yeah. Yeah, Re- really really cool shot and, and i also want to mention that this young lady goes out into the deep i mean like the deep waters and will will spear a fish like a dolphin not the purpose yeah. not the purposes the dolphin <laughs> mahi mahi make, make sure we clear that up uh, yeah. Out there in the deep, and she has no reservations about doing it. M- meanwhile, g- gosh, who knows what's out there? <laughs> we got- yeah, it was. I just got a pretty nice mahi uh, in Panama as well. We were in about a thousand feet of water, and there's a bunch Good of Lord. birds by a turtle. And I jumped in, and there's about it's like a thirty, thirty-one pound bull mahi. Jumped in, got a nice holding shot on him, and he. I have the video. I'll have to share with you guys. He, went, yes. he took us for a ride. Yeah. He went for a run. Oh my gosh! A couple pounds away from another world record for uh, mahi on pull on a um, gun, not pull spear. So, um, but yeah, it was very exciting. So I'm excited to share the photos and um, article with you. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. What well, part of Panama were you in? I was down uh, by David, Panama. So okay. right at the Costa Rica border on the west coast. Okay. Very remote. So you got, you fly to Panama City and then take another uh, flight to David. And then we jumped on a ta- in a taxi, took us to the water, jumped on a panga, which was about a, a 45-minute ride to an island that just has one house on it that's solar panel and eco-friendly. Um, it's a pretty special place. It's still very untouched. Wow. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We were, we were in Los uh, Buscos, which, again, was about uh, a six-hour drive through the mountains from Panama wow. City. Wow. So on wow. the West Coast, and again, beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah, it's it's just everything about it. We also visited an animal shelter there, a uh, lady who rescues injured animals or abandoned animals, and there were sloths and monkeys and coat of monkey oh, and sweet. all kinds of. So I have some pretty, I got to hold a sloth, and that was definitely a bucket list for me. <laughs> They're adorable, aren't they? <laughs> wow. They're amazing creatures. Wow. <laughs> well, what touched me really was... Um, the little story that you put up about how you went spearfishing and then decided to share it with these kids that were in, in need of food. Um, yeah. And uh, you just opened up your heart and said, here you go. Uh, that's the yeah. kind of that's the kind of thing we I look for in the world because we don't have a lot of that going on. We have quite the opposite of that in many cases. So when I can find somebody who does something like that, I want to highlight that because there are people out there doing it. People like Stephanie that are doing it. Anytime that I see anything of that nature, um, I try to highlight it because we need more of that. We need more people to open their hearts and be be willing to share with other people. Um, you know, for me, it's the sharing of knowledge. Uh, one of the most enjoyable things I do is Sunday morning is do this show because I constantly learn. I learned again this morning something that most people probably already knew, but I didn't never already thought about. It. Thought current current could run one way on the top of the water and run a different way down at the bottom. I never thought about that. Mm-hmm. I'm always <laughs> learning something yeah. new. Um, so I'm greatly appreciative for all of those that that, that pitch in and, and help do what we do. Uh, and I hope that in doing that, that we br- attract people to the show so we can share with them all these different things. Um, I don't have a recent picture of Stephanie. Get me a recent picture, if you will, Stephanie. This is an amazing young lady. I'll tell you what. You should see what she's capable of doing um, and the confidence that she instills. And when you see someone like this and, and does what they're doing, uh, you can see the confidence that, that she has in herself. And um, it's inspiring. It really is because, unfortunately, we have a generation of people coming up that uh, are they're not of that mindset. Uh, many of them are not of that mindset. Many of them are of the mindset that we owe them something and that they don't really need to do anything to to uh, uh, work with the world in any way, shape, or form. And the end result is instead of being an asset to society, they become a liability. And uh, this is why I enjoy people like this. Go ahead, Robert. I think you're trying to say something, and I'm going on and on. <laughs> No, actually, I was talking to my dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> my, do- my dog is sitting here at my feet. 
All right. Well, I, I, I thought. Think, I think it must be breakfast time. <laughs> all right. Well, we're we're working on that as well. You know, I I I stopped drinking the coffee ever since I've had the heart surgery. Um, it has really been uh, an amazing thing because uh, I do the show Saturday night to midnight, and I don't usually get to bed till one. Then I'll get up this morning at six and get get everything going. And prior to that, I'd I'd have to have that coffee. It was just this fog that would not go away. And uh, after that, I don't get the fog. It's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is a blessing. Well, well I, I still drink coffee, and apparently my dog would like some coffee too, but uh, <laughs> she's not going to get any. <laughs> but uh, I did want to thank Stephanie for the great article. Um, as always, they're just great. So she does a wonderful job. So while we're mentioning the article, it's the Florida Fisherman Magazine, and you Correct. can. What is the website, Robert? It's www.flfishmag.com. And uh, Robert also, just just so that you know, Robert will take uh, stories. He'll cons- I shouldn't say that. I won't speak for him. He will consider stories from other people. So if you have something you want to contribute um, to the magazine, our, go our ahead. Our magazine is entirely made up of stories from our readers. So. A, a reader-supported magazine. Just like a listener-supported station, we are a listener-supported Correct. station. We have a reader-supported magazine. That's That's awesome. That's cool. And um, if they want to submit something, Robert, how do they do that? They send it to pages at flfishmag.com. And there are uh, numerous pictures of, um, oh my gosh, many, many different uh, people, many different ladies, but uh, there are numerous pictures of Stephanie and, and her ability, her skills, I should say, uh, in there. And Stephanie it's impressive. Is phenomenal, so. Impressive young lady. Thank you. Well, any uh, we're we're coming up against a break, but uh, I've got a minute or two. Anything you want to share with us before we go uh, before we go to the break? For oh, me? What's your next adventure? Oh yeah, that's a good one. So my next adventure, I am going to uh, the Bahamas to do a, a private free diving class for a group of people there. So we'll do free diving and then pole spearing, intro to pole spearing. Um, so that'll be a fun adventure. And then after that, headed over to California for hopefully some bluefin tuna. Mm-hmm. Um, my goal this year is to uh, spearfish each uh, of the major species of tuna. So, so far, I've gotten yellowfin and dogtooth tuna. So on my list now are bluefin and big eye. The dog fu- awesome. The, cool. the dogtooth awesome. tuna was kind of a scary looking thing. I, I never seen tuna with fish like that. Um, excuse me, yeah, a tuna with teeth like that, fish like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a scary looking fish, and it's also a, one of the scariest fish to try to spearfish. Uh, super powerful, super challenging conditions, very deep fish. So mm. that was a big bucket list fish for me, um, and a pretty rewarding experience there as well. We were able to shoot a, a dog tooth and put it in this little dugout canoe of one of the locals who had gone miles offshore in this dugout canoe, and, and he didn't speak any English didn't believe that we were giving him the fish. So wow. um, that's my goal, to travel the world and, and spear a fish and then give back to these communities and, and really live the ocean-to-table lifestyle. And we're going to try to get Stephanie out fishing with us this summer, too. Hot dog. Yes. Well done. Say, I'll see if you can keep me on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to take you down with Melanie, and, and, and you two can just get in the water. So Charlie and I will fish. You guys can get in the water. I can, I can, can have, see we it. We can have a fishing competition. I can see getting into a school of dolphin, and she says, nah, forget this. I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> completely oh my goodness well i greatly appreciate you taking the time to share with us uh, again you're an awesome young lady i don't i'm not just saying that i mean it uh some of the stuff that i've seen you do is is really inspiring and uh, i'm grateful that you took the time this morning to share with us I'd be looking forward to having you back on again and uh, sharing Thank some you. more with us in the meantime when you get a chance send me the video or send robert the video or robert can tell me the length of the video and i'll put it up on the uh the Fish Florida Show page on uh, Facebook. Great. Awesome. Thank you both so much, or and you, Pam. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. Take care. Have a great day. All right, Miss okay, Stephanie, bye. thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Stephanie you. Lynn, you can find her on Facebook. Awesome young lady again. I uh, just can't say enough about uh, people in, in who this younger generation that stand up and above, uh, way up and above, and she's one of them. All right, it's that magic moment, so uh, if you'll just give me a second here, we'll see if we can uh, get it to work and maybe sound like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> we'll be right back. Dad 
that is an adventure full of special moments. A cruise! Surprise! Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> But every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> Aww. can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. <laughs> There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I wasn't sure if I could do it. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but the teachers, the counselors, they help you. One of the teachers was Ms. Araceli. Ms. Araceli, she gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll come over and she'll sit there with you until you get it. Thank you, Ms. Araceli. I know you make a difference in people's lives because of the person and teacher you are. I wanted to be here because I wanted to thank you for helping me get a beautiful gift. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Getting your high school diploma, it is a life-changing experience. It really is. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Have you ever heard of Audible? Audible is a website with hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. They're all high quality, easy to listen to, and best of all, if you take advantage of a special deal that we've worked out for you, you can get one for free. That's right, a free audiobook of your choice in any genre, simply by going to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and signing up for the free trial. It's simple to do, and it would support the shows that we bring to you, and hey, you get a free book out of the whole thing. So why not take advantage of it today? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and sign up for the trial. Ask 10 different scientists about the environment, population control, genetics, and you'll get 10 different answers. But there's one thing every scientist on the planet agrees on. Whether it happens in a hundred years, or a thousand years, or a million years, eventually our sun will grow cold and go out. When that happens, it won't just take us. It'll take Marilyn Monroe, and Lao Tzu, and Einstein, and Moro Puto and Buddy Holly and Aristophanes. All of this, all of this was for nothing. Unless we go to the stars. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today while other stations just talk a good game we win it hey sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun all i grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water i fish until dawn oh my i caught a shot i'm fishing it all and on when the sun shines all day It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. Okay, we are back. It is the Fish Florida Show. A good morning to you. If you're just joining in, you've missed out on quite a bit, but uh, it won't be gone forever. We will have archives set up. You can go back and listen to the archives. You can find them on fishfloridashow.com um, under past events and uh, click there and you'll find the archives. Uh, a couple of weeks behind, but they will be current here sometime this week. <laughs> uh, this morning, I have uh, Pam Worth. She's one of the top female kayak anglers. She's uh, been kind enough to hang in there with me and, and uh, be my co-host. And uh, I also have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I have Bruce Marks on with me. Bruce is an activist 
you know, I talk about people that we need more of. We need more people like Stephanie. We need more people like Bruce. Uh, I'm going to let Bruce kind of explain that, what I mean by that. But uh, welcome back, Pam, and uh, good morning to you, Mr. Bruce. R- good morning, good morning. How are you doing, Rascala? Doing well, my friend. Uh, how are you feeling, more importantly? Oh, I'm doing, I, I'm telling you, I, I was just explaining how I, I used to have to have coffee in the morning because I do a show prior to this, uh, and I'm up to like 1 o'clock in the morning. And then I get up at 6, so I don't get much sleep. So I would wake up in this fog, and I'd have to have coffee to get me out of the fog. And I haven't had to have, have that, uh, have, I haven't had coffee since I've had the surgery, which is March 21st, I think it was. So uh, it, it's really <laughs> kind of strange to, you know, to be able to, to, after you've experienced that for so long, to be able to walk away from it. That was the only time I drank coffee, was Sunday morning, <laughs> the only time. <laughs> I'm not a coffee drinker. So you can imagine my sensitivity to it. Were, were somebody who drinks coffee every day, they could drink two or three cups and never feel it. I drink a, a cup or two, and it's like, ooh, <laughs> I'm already buzzing away. Right, right. Well, for, from a coffee junkie, I can tell you, I'm not sure I could make that uh, change. <laughs> Well, I used to, many years ago, I used to, I mean, I grew up in Miami, and I used to drink um, cafe con leche, and uh, that stuff is like liquid speed. Uh, that, you drink that, and then you can feel your heart pumping. <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, so I asked you to come on because I saw some very interesting things, again, passion strings of my heart. Uh, let's talk about the reef thing first, and I want to talk about the other, the other thing. Uh, the reef, uh, what's happening with this reef thing going on? Um, the, the reef, uh, that's happening, the bug light shoal artificial reef is a, I guess a culmination of a lot of events which have taken place, uh, over the last several years. Um, it, it really has its start back in July of 2014, um, when a structure known as bug light, uh, which was a very important, uh, fad for the local uh, bait fishermen here in Miami that uh, held fa- uh, herring, ballyhoo, uh, uh, pilchards. And it, it basically was the go-to place to get live bait on your way out to go fishing. My friend Jimmy Lewis uh, on Facebook in July of 2014 posted a video uh, of bug light being removed. And nobody knew that this was happening uh, as you can understand, it was a big outrage to everybody. And with no, without notice, uh, until Jimmy posted that video, um, nobody had an idea that bug light would be removed. And apparently that removal was part of a bigger uh, project by the Coast Guard who, who had title in all of these structures, these aids to navigation. The Coast Guard was removing various structures, uh, bug light, um, they removed the beacon, which was the marker down by uh, Triumph Reef, and they started making their way down the coast to remove some of these aids to navigation, which uh, were becoming a maintenance problem, and they wanted to get them off their books, so to speak. Hmm. So that, that, that's how this all started, and, and, and I was up in New York uh, on business when I saw this, and that following Monday, I called the Coast Guard and I asked them, what, you know, what is this about? And the Coast Guard officer was cordial and told me what was happening. And I asked him, well, what, what, what next is, well, what's next on the hit list? And uh, he then advised me that all the range markers and government cut were coming out because of the Port Miami deep dredge, uh, deep dredge project. They had to take those out because they were putting in new range markers. Hmm. And so that in turn caused a whole uproar because one of the range markers in government cut, known as the Bent Range Marker, was also a major source of bait for threadfin herring and, and ballyhoo and whatnot. So um, once I heard that that project was already in, in the works, uh, we started a, a big campaign to save the Bent Range Marker. We, we literally received donations from the members of the fishing community um, in excess of $135,000. And and, and what that allowed us to do was to stop the process. And and, and I could go on with everything that happened there. I I was in touch with the Coast Guard, Coast Guard's lawyers, 
the contractor, uh, the city of uh, Miami, uh, Miami-Dade County, Durham, and we were all able to work together to come up with a plan to get the vent range marker off of the schedule for removal and to save it. And once it was saved, we had some residual money left over from the, uh, uh, from the, uh, fundraising. So then we in turn got in touch with Durham in, in Miami that handles all the artificial reef, uh, activity. And we ended up permitting this particular spot off of, uh, Key Biscayne in about 25 feet of water, which last week started the deployment of a two phase, uh, project. Uh, the first phase was to, deploy various cement that was donated uh, by a company called Rose Engineering um, with the help of Kearns Marine Construction, who has been great through all of this. Um, and so last week was the, the deployment of this concrete. And now, of course, every Memorial Day, the winds blow, and that's kind of put a halt on the second phase of the project, which is the deployment of concrete boulders, which are all going to be contained within a pre-approved and permitted 300 by 300 foot box uh, in, in 22 to 25 feet of water. So that's what's going on at the moment. You know, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, before you explained what, you, what, what this is all about, I, we need people like Stephanie, we need people like Bruce. The reason why I say that, Bruce si- sees something, or Bruce has something that has happened to him, and chooses not to be a victim, because we'll get into that in a second instead becomes an activist to help other people. Bruce sees this thing going on with our reef out here, and instead of just saying, okay, well, there's nothing I can do, gets himself involved, and before we know it, there's an entire project going on, thanks to, you know, I won't give him 100%, but I don't, I believe that if he, it hadn't been somebody like him who stepped up and st- started raising the attention to what was going on, it would have never, I, I think, it would have never come to, to pass. Or if it did, it would have been maybe much later on. And here we're already under the phase two of this uh, this particular project. The other thing that Bruce, the way that I met Bruce, was um, we are having a, a series of thefts going on here in South Florida. Uh, anything from, I've seen as little as a cowling off of an outboard stolen to the entire engine to the boat, trailer and everything, out of people's yards, out of people's storage areas. Um Bruce was someone who had suffered one of these thefts, uh, thousands of dollars of, of in value of equipment, electronic equipment stolen, and um, was unable to retrieve it and decided, well, I'm not just going to sit back and, and do nothing. He decided to bring awareness to it. And the way that he did that, well, he used it several ways, but one of the ways that he did that was through social media. Um, Bruce, explain to the listeners about the different pages that you have on social media. Uh, Rascala, thanks. Yeah, you know, you, you know, this this whole thing. I found myself, and I never considered myself to be an activist. I, I grew up in Miami. My passion is fishing, and uh, somehow, when this bug light thing uh, happened, um, you know, something triggered in me to to you know. Sometimes you just have to step up. Mm-hmm. You know, we see people on Facebook promoting themselves and using it for uh, business purposes, and 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 that's all great. Um, but th- this is something to me that uh, uh, I feel at, at this late stage of my life, I have to give something back to this passion of mine that, that's always been there for me since I've been uh, growing up in Miami. So I, I, I think maybe activist, I've always seen that word as a little uh, strong. I never considered myself one, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it, nonetheless, it's, it's kind of something that I fell into over the last couple of years. Because like you said, if you see something... You know, it's one thing to complain about it, but it's another thing to do something. Yeah. And, and this issue about the theft, uh, this, this is something that not only hit home with me uh, because of my personal experience, but it, hit, it hits home to me in the area in which I grew up. And it's not okay for people to think that they could go to somebody's house at 3 in the morning and disconnect the linkage of the truck, move it out of the way, and back up their truck to a 27 contender and go steal it and strip it. And it's not okay for somebody to go to somebody's house and to steal a lower unit 
And it's not okay for somebody to go to somebody's boat and steal their GPS. It's not okay. And, and, and I took that personally. And, and once that happened to me, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try and, and do something, not only to bring awareness of the situation, but to actually try and, and have a remedy to it. And so what I had originally done was I went out on my Facebook page and I shot out a uh, post trying to get all the dock masters in the area uh, to, to get into a network uh, and, and to start communicating with each other. And I've got a good friend, his name is Scott Baxter, who runs a few Facebook pages, and he saw my post, and he took the, 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 the boat watch and marina watch concept and, and basically put it to music. And we formed the South Florida Marina and Boat Watch group. And that, that Facebook group has grown um, exponentially in the last couple of uh, months and, and over the last year. And, and what it provides is a, a place to go. Uh, if somebody has a friend who experiences a theft, they upload the theft and they uh, provide notice uh, uh, to the fishing community and boating community of the theft. Um, a after a year of, of dealing with that, I actually had law enforcement reach out to me. And I'm now in uh, with a very core group of, of officers who are dedicated to investigating uh, these thefts. And, and after my last year of involvement in the Boat Watch group, I formed another group called Wanted South Florida Marina Theft Task Force. And the initiative of that Facebook page, and I started back in January, was to start bringing awareness to the local government that we need to do something about this because it's not okay to see what's going on. We can't just sit back and assume it's Miami. It's something that we just have to accept. So since January, I've been with meeting with the city of Miami police. I've met with a lot of fine officers from all agencies in South Florida. And I even had a meeting with the state attorney, uh, Mrs. Rundle, about this situation. And there are a lot of things that are happening right now as a result of this awareness is being spread to the various uh, police agencies as well as the state attorney's office that there is a there is now a communication path in place where everybody's sharing information from palm beach county down to monroe county and everybody is linked together so what's happening now in the last year is with the help of everybody that's on these pages when somebody gets hit, somebody gets robbed, they upload this stuff onto the Facebook page. We are having law enforcement not only on that page, but they're also we're also connected through communications. They are on this stuff like white on rice. So not that it's a bulletproof scenario, then we're not going to stop the theft completely. But the bad guys now know that there's, there's uh, thousands of pairs of eyes on them. And what we're finding interesting is that people, you know, you've seen that show Live PD. We actually have members now going down the road, and if they see a boat without a motor or if it's missing a GPS in the console, they're actually taking video and snapping pictures, and they're sending it to us. Now, a lot of this stuff, of course, is innocent, so we don't blast it on the page, but we take the information and we pass it on to the investigators that we know about in case it does turn into something uh uh, something bad and uh, a lot of good thing, things are happening as a result of the awareness that these Facebook pages are bringing and, and it can't work without people getting involved you know the more people that are out there the more people that are on the pages it's that same old story see something say something it may be nothing or it may be a theft in progress and we've already had a few arrests as a result of that's the right. page. That's right. And uh, we, we expect a few more uh, if this stuff doesn't stop. Recently in Melbourne, it was well publicized. <clears throat> Some guys in Miami, mm -hmm. maybe they were feeling the heat down here. They went up to Melbourne to hit a yard. Um, that was all. That group was already subject to an investigation. There were helicopters, there were police dogs, and they got these guys in the act trying to steal some motors out of a guy's yard. Yep. Yep. So with with the involvement of 
uh, what Bruce has done, uh, there's two boats that I can think of that have been recovered um, almost intact because it was so quick. Uh, and there's numerous other boats that, that have been recovered, unfortunately, when it's too late. They've either been stripped or uh, nothing. all the motors have been taken out of them. Um, but because of his involvement, put a serious dent in these people's mentality where they think they can just pull up to wherever they want and take whatever they want. Uh, if they have any anything sparking going on up there in their brain, they'll realize there's a lot of people looking out now. And this spotlight is not only a, it's not a, a, a focused light, it's a very broad light. There's a lot of people involved. And uh, because of this, we put a dent on these uh, on these activities, and I'm grateful for that. As well as I'm very grateful for what's going on with the reef. Anything that helps us uh, in the fishing industry, um, <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. I great I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for what you do, Bruce, and thanks for the update. No, for sure. Thanks, Rosella. Thanks for having me on. I mean, it's just it's all about awareness, and 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 sometimes we feel that we we do too many posts and everything else, but the way Facebook works and the logarithms, you never know uh, who you reach uh, and how many people you can get to. Uh, so we've kind of run a fine line of having to post too much versus uh, not post enough. So anytime we have a chance to speak with uh, <laughs> folks like you and spread the word, it definitely yeah. helps. I appreciate it, my friend. God bless you, and I uh, wish you a, a great day. What's left of it here? Thanks, Lane. Thank you, and continue to feel better and recover. Thank you. Parting words, Miss Pam, before we take a break? No, I just appreciate all he does and getting involved. We just need more people like that. Yeah, amen. Good job. I didn't give her much of a chance to say anything on that last slot. <laughs> Sorry about that. You got it, you got it handled. <laughs> all right, my friends, it is that magic moment. Oh, my goodness. Listening to the Fish Floor of the Show with your host, Chris Keller. Don't go away. We'll be right back. What's up, Ricky Dillon here at the largest social media gathering in the world. So the internet is an amazing place, but sometimes it can be a not so great place with online bullying and trolling and stuff. Have you ever seen online bullying before? Unfortunately, it's kind of common. Online, people can hide behind the internet. Those comment sections can be a little... Harsh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Word for it. I've been called many homophobic names. I felt embarrassed. Yeah. It made me stop liking myself. What if I told you there is something that you can use anytime that you see bullying online that calls attention to it in a nice way? Like, hey, that's not nice. I wish that was the thing. It's this! So anytime that you see any kind of hate online, go into your phone, go into the symbol section, post this I, and it says well, that's bullying, that's not nice. So would you post this if you saw someone bullying someone? Oh yeah, definitely. It's like a lot more mature way to handle it. Find the emoji in your phone, send it to five of your friends, and let them know what it means to be a witness. Go to eyewitnessbullying.org to learn more about the emoji. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Wittick of Bowen Realty. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick of Bowen Realty. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Diane Wittick at Bowen Realty, located in Wellington at Wellington Trace East and Forest Hill Boulevard. 561-247-5478. We just just finished finished dinner, and and it was time time for homework. He hates homework. homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's just trying as hard as I can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Do you have an unusual pet? 
Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. All right, we are back. A good morning to you if you're just joining in. It is the Fish Florida Show. I am your host, Riscola. This morning, I have with me one of the top female kayak anglers, Miss Pam Worth. Good morning, Miss Pam. Good morning, sir. And uh, along with her, I have... Summer Warren. Now, you know, I talked about how the world needs people like Stephanie and Bruce. Uh, Stephanie with her inspiration, Bruce with his, he doesn't like to call it activism, but he's an active man. He, he's Something happened, and he didn't just sit idly by. He took the bull by the horns and uh, showed, him, uh, showed him how to do it. <clears throat> well, uh, Summer, I don't know what's happening to my voice. I guess it's from the lack of coffee. <laughs> my voice is a little dry. Uh, Summer is someone who had an experience and use that experience to make a positive difference in the world. And I'll give her a couple of minutes to explain what all that is about. Good morning, Miss Summer. Good morning. How are you guys this lovely Memorial Day weekend? Go ahead, Pam. Oh, very Great. good. Very good. Good to have you back good. on, young lady. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a little while. Yeah, we miss you. <laughs> we miss you. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing. So in 2013, um, we lost our son Chase uh, to a fatal neurological disease at 10 months old. We were deep rooted in the marine industry. We um, have a small marine canvas company and we wanted to fulfill a promise that we made to our son prior to him passing and that was to help other families in similar situations that we were in. And, uh, we, and from that we created Chase and Tails Fishing Tournament. And uh, we've quickly grown to one of the largest tournaments on the East Coast. Um, and we now fund needy families with very sick children. And with the help of the community, our teams, our sponsors, we've donated over $165,000 in the last five years. And um, now offer grants through our website uh, throughout the year so families can go right online and, and apply. And that's due to the fishing community and how great group of people they are. Again, it's, uh, like I said, people helping people, and this is someone who's taken an experience in their life and turned it around to help other people. It, it is truly a heartstring of mine. Thank you, and I mean that with everything. Thank you for what you're doing. I know there are people out there who truly appreciate you. Um, it's this kind of thing that really helps us get through life when people reach out to other people. And uh, I'm sure many of the people that you help, you don't even know. They're just strangers, right? That is, that's correct, yes. I, I don't know most of them. I, you know, I, we try to build relationships with the families and um, follow them throughout their, um, you know, their journey. And eventually we do end up building relationships, but from the start, no, we usually yeah. don't know them. But we know their feelings of what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, we've quickly, with the growth, and even are, are been recognized by national sponsors for... Um, not only 
our charity work, but the quality of our event. Hmm. I have heard much about it. I, I have not witnessed it. Um, <laughs> shamefully, I haven't, but I uh, uh, want to hear more about uh, now. This is happening now, right? This is happening this year, correct? Yeah, so this year, uh, Captain's Meeting is September 5th out of Jupiter, Florida. It's um, at Harborside Place and then lines in September 7th. Um, we already have about 75 boats registered. Wow. So um, we're, we're, we're a little ahead of last year. Last year, we had 165 boats fish. And we, we pride ourselves in, like I said, having a quality event that's uh, focused on a, an angler's enjoyment. You know, we personally like to fish and, and fish many local tournaments as well. And we know what we like when we fish tournaments. So we really try to provide a, a quality event um, in addition to having, um, you know, the anglers give back. And, and the name of the tournament, I think, correct me if I'm mistaken, Chasing Tails? Chase and Tails, yes. So and and Tails, let's, Chase. Let, yeah, let's spell it so that we, go ahead. C-H-A-S-E-N-T-A-I-L-Z. Yeah, there's, there's the, the kind of the unusual part is that it ends in a Z like zebra. Uh, Chase and That's Tails correct. Tournament. Um, I think you can find Summer on Facebook, right? Can we find you on some on Facebook? Yeah, I mean, you can find Chase and Tails on Facebook, Instagram. Our website, chaseandtails.com, is where we register. We also do um, a few other uh, local events as well. We have a painting class coming up taught by famous marine artist uh, Carrie Chen. So that'll be coming up cool. as well. Yeah, so we have a lot of, uh, a lot of angler-based um, events. Wow. I think Pam's trying to get a word in edgewise, and I'm keeping. <laughs> I'm doing it to her again. Go ahead, Pam. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I was going to make two comments. One is that the the families that you're helping, when they get in a situation like that, I know that their own families try to help out the best they can, but nobody understands um, unless you've been through it. Yeah. Yeah. How the feelings and everything when you do have a, especially a child that's, um, you know, critical like that and just that you're there and can answer questions and if nothing more, hold their hand because you actually, you know, have been there and been through it. So I, th- I think that's amazing that you reached out. Awesome. I mean, you could have just locked yourself in the house and not done anything. Yeah. But yeah. to share your experience with others is, is truly amazing. Well, I appreciate that, and and that's that's what a lot of people don't understand is when you have a medically complex child, not only are you dealing with the fact of uh, grieving possibly the future and um, dealing with constant um, obstacles, you're, it's very isolating because you can't have your child around other children mm. because they could possibly the flu would kill them, mm. you know, a, a common cold wow. would you know could kill them, so you don't have much support other than say maybe social media or phone calls or texts because you can't take the chance of the child getting sick. Right. So it's it's certainly an isolating, scary experience. So now, you know, yes, we offer some, um, I am part of several groups where we help newly diagnosed families and, and help to guide them and, you know, even pair them up with other families that may be going through similar situations. Um, it's, it's, it's certainly, um, very important to help them not feel so alone. Right. That's priceless. That, that's amazing. Yeah. And then, Hey, uh, going to the tournament, what you said, the tournament, what are you guys targeting? What kind of tournament is it? It's a, uh, Kingfish Dolphin Wahoo tournament. Uh, last year, a approximately 60 pound King won, wow. but we had wow. several <laughs> large dolphin caught as well which is great for September. Um, we had amazing weather. We also do a free kids family event during our award ceremony where we have a water slide, car show, vendors um, that goes along with our weigh-in. So it's, it's, we try to gear it for all of the community and um, to just come out and enjoy the day. Oh, that's great. Awesome. That is awesome. And where, where is all this happening again now? It's Harborside Place in Jupiter. Harborside Place in Jupiter. Yeah, in and what we do, right, September 5th is the captain's meeting. September 7th is the um, festival along with the tournament fishing day. 
And we ha- we have teams use this you really as like a family vacation. We have many teams that come over from the west coast of Florida. Our host hotel is the Wyndham Grand right on the water there on site at our venue. And they offer rooms to our team sponsors and volunteers for $99. It's an amazing hmm. hotel. Wow. So a lot of teams use this opportunity to bring their families over, take some time off of work, and use it as a little vacation. Sweet. Families, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a really great event. Yeah, that's a key word in my life, families. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing what we can to keep the families together. And uh, again, uh, I mentioned earlier, getting them away from the electronics that we're so saturated in, we're so involved in, and enjoying what we have. We're water on three sides of the state. And uh, if you're not here for the water, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's yeah. just the way it is. It, that's- that's the thing. Even if you don't catch anything or, or win or place, it's always a good day on the water. You're making yeah. memories with your friends and your family. Amen. You can't go yeah. wrong. Yeah. Well, I will be looking forward to getting some more updates from you between now and then. Uh, and you mentioned 70-some-odd boats so far? Yeah, we have about 74 boats registered right now. Um, our registration is 225 right now until August 17th, and then the price will increase to 325 And if they want to register, or how do they register? How is that done? They can go right on our website to chaseandtails.com, and then you can register right on the homepage. Sweet. Well, that's great. Any parting words? I've got a couple of minutes here. If you want uh, anything else that you want to let our listeners know, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. Well, I just, I, I just sincerely, you know, really just appreciate all of the uh, support that we've received um, in the, you know, in the beginning stages. It, it's difficult to not only be mourning and grieving, but to also put yourself out there and try to start something like this. And we couldn't have honestly done this or have grown without the community or people like yourselves that gives us the exposure and the support. So it's not just us, it's everyone. Who are some of your primary sponsors? We have several, well, Harborside is a large sponsor. We also have Tommy Bahama who caters the event for us. You know, all of that is donated by them. Um, We have Yamaha, we have Garmin, we have a lot of local companies um, like Inlet Plumbing, Ibis Building, um, uh, you know, just several, a lot of the local companies support us and and that's where a lot of it comes from. Even some of our teams have stepped up to become sponsors. Wow. Great. Yeah, I love, I love them, the I idea. I like giving them a yeah. shout out and thanking especially local communi- companies for, you know, paying back in. And let's support them. Let's support them. Absolutely. Local. Yeah. Yeah, support the yeah. companies that support your communities. That's, I couldn't put it any better. That's really what it's about. <laughs> uh, everybody wins. And that's the kind of thing that I like is when everybody, in a, in a way it's kind of selfish because I'm part of everybody. So when everybody wins, I win as well. Um, so that's, that's what I like. And again, with people like, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my throat this morning with people like summer taking an experience and then turning it around and making it, uh, work for other people as well. Uh, helping other people benefit from that. That, that is awesome. That is truly awesome. Thank you for what you do, my dear. I'm looking forward to having you back on with updates and what to, uh, as to what is going on. Thank you so much for having me. And one last thing with the, you know, with this year's um, proceeds, we hope in 2020 to roll out a dining plan Mm -hmm. for uh, families that are admitted to local hospitals where we can help uh, fund some of their meals while they're admitted. I can assure you it gets very expensive. Yeah, it doesn't. uh, Yeah, I totally agree. It doesn't take anything anymore uh, to rack up a huge bill. um, And uh, that's, that's another side that we didn't even talk about, that uh, that stress of having to deal with the, the, the pressure of the finances that, that, that come with all of this. None, none of this stuff is even close to being cheap. So thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it, and, and I love what you're doing. It's awesome. You're an awesome young lady. Thanks again. We're off to a break, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go away, Pam, before we go. Parting words for Miss Summer? No, just like I said before, I appreciate everything she does and, you know, be blessed and continue the work. And thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, 
I appreciate it and hope to talk soon and enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day weekend. Thank you so much, Summer. Right back at you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. With your host, Briscella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. From the author of Silent Steps and Haunted, finding an explanation for the unknown, comes a story so chilling it will haunt you for years to come. Krista is a young woman escaping her past, running away from her family, her traumas, and her God, hoping to find a new life in a different town. But when she is forced to make a horrible choice, she comes to realize malevolent entities have controlled the true darkness she has been a part of. That is when her real terror begins. Penitence is disturbing and evocative. It will tear down the walls between what is real and what is nightmare. Penitence is the new novel by the man called the new master of speculative fiction, Ira Robinson. Find it and all of his books at his website, (laughs) originalworlds.com. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then... Listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561 792 9600. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today, 561-793-9992. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, where your pet gets celebrity treatment. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. (laughs) Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. <laughs> Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> Uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. Dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council.
It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Rizcola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Rizcola Stevens. All right, we are back. It is the Fish Florida Show, and I'm having issues here. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go. All right, we are back. It is the Fish Florida Show. I'm just a couple of technical issues here going on. Uh, while the while the commercials were ringing, fortunately, I had the uh, wherewithal to uh, plug my battery back up in. While the commercials were going, we had a little flicker going on, and I think I kind of messed things up. But we're back. <laughs> we're back, and we're going strong. And I uh, <clears throat> want to take an opportunity to uh, thank each and every one of you out there that take the time to you know share with us and allow us to share with you. For me, it's always a learning experience. I, I'm always learning something about the fishing industry and what's going on uh, around it and all the different things. Uh, this weekend, being the Memorial Day weekend, uh, we remember those who have given their lives. And uh, not only that, but the families. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't end with uh, these soldiers that have died in the line of duty or d- just died while serving for whatever reason. Um, it doesn't end there. It goes on with the families. And I wanted to play a little song uh, and dedication to them in memorial of them. This song is sung by a veteran, and um, it is uh, rewritten by this veteran, this young lady. And um, I think it's, it's uh, fitting for the time that we remember these people who have paid the ultimate price. Oh, my goodness. That wasn't it. <laughs> oh, my. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can get that to come up. There we go. You packed your bags and shut the door. You crossed the sea to fight a war. You didn't know just what would happen to you. Stepped in the dirt, boots on the ground, and gunfire was the only sound into yourself. You whispered hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Every day. There's a wash in a haze of red, the blood, the mud, too many dead. Your weary soul was crying, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. To help you hear a shot You know you're in a deadly spot You never thought the day would come Now did ya? Your brother falls down to the ground The enemy is all around And from your lips you scream a Hallelujah Hallelujah
How can you repay people that have uh, paid the ultimate price? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, seems to be a shallow way <clears throat> for the life of a loved one. Uh, so in memory of those and the families who have survived those who have passed on, thank you. Thank you for your endurance. Thank you for your patriotism. All right, I have, uh, let's see, we've got Pam on the line. Pam is my co-host. She's one of the top female kayak anglers here in Florida. I have uh, Robert Warner. Robert is with the Florida Fisherman Magazine, um, and he's always so generous, and he's one of my regulars. Thank you so much for doing that, Robert. And I have uh, Victoria. Victoria is with the um, Fish Florida Group, and I wanted to bring Victoria on for a moment and have her uh, kind of mention a few things. Uh, of course, uh, the, the Fish Florida app is one of them. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing if Victoria didn't have the insight to come up with the Fish Florida app, which came up with the Fish Florida show. And uh, from there, I'll give it over to Victoria. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, Rascala. Good morning, Pam and Robert. Good morning. Good morning, young lady. How are you? I am great. I just, just um, one thing I got to say is... Um, the, the song was beautiful. It was a beautiful rendition. I mean, it just gave me chills. It was just so beautiful. Thank you for playing that, Rascala. I'm still wiping my eyes and blowing my nose. Me too. Me too. Um, you know, there. Um, this is a little off subject, but there, there is a tax incentive to hire veterans. It's a $9,500 tax incentive um, that if businesses hire veterans, they can get that tax break on their taxes. Wow, I don't think people know that, you know. So it's it's a it's a very big tax incentive. Um, so we should all think about that, you know, when these people come back from serving for our country and and all of the strife <clears throat> and trauma that they experience while they're serving. We need to give these guys a break, you know. Yep, I agree. I agree. Twenty two so, a day. Um, anyhow, and also I want to do a shout out for Pam and Robert Warner for graciously giving their Sundays, you know, spending time on Sundays for the show. Yes. They always, they're both just fantastic, um, Riscala. Well, I, I'm, I'm always a, such appreciative of the time that they take because, you know, it's, it's, they, I'm sure they could be doing something else. And it's, it's not a, and one of those shows where it's, uh, you know, we're super exciting, but we're out here to, to my idea of the show to begin with was to not really reach out for professionals. The professionals already have plenty of shows to watch. Reach out for the average right. person, you know, the family, really kind of reach out to the families out there because that's in, in my experience, my life experience growing up, <laughs> fishing was what we did as a family. We all went out because we all loved doing it. We all went out and did the same thing. We enjoyed the same experience during the same time. And uh, that helps build relationships. And for me, and what I have witnessed is that the family is under a direct attack. Uh, we need to do whatever we can to support the family. And uh, that, that's fishing to me is, is one of those options. It's, a, it, it's something that's away from all the technology because we're always around. Hopefully it is anyway. I mean, I, I went, uh, well, where was I the other day? I was, uh, oh, Jupiter. I was up in Jupiter and uh, was uh, driving along uh, the... Um, over the bridge and I could I look down and there's a little catwalk down there and there's there's some kids down there fishing and son of a gun if one of them didn't have a phone in their hand while they're fishing <laughs> it just, just kind of took away from everything so hopefully that um, you know when they're out there doing that they're away from this technology for a little while enjoying God's gift to us we have water all around us you can, should be able to enjoy it well um, there's you know one thing about fishing and and getting families involved is it does create, it's, it's a bonding thing, but it also creates lifelong memories like the ones that you share Amen. with us. Yeah. There's yeah. several ways to fish in Florida. You can fish from the shore. You can fish from docks. You can fish from Bridges. charter boats. Yeah. Yeah. You, can share a char you can share a boat like what we have with Stacey yeah. McGaskell's True. company, fishwithme.net, which you can find on the mobile app. Um, but there's so many different ways to fish. It doesn't have to cost a lot. Um, but, but it does, it creates lifelong memories and, and risk I mean, you shared so many great memories with us. Yeah. You know, it's just, for me, it was a way for our family to, again, everybody loved doing it and we all did had the same experiences at the same time. And, and it, I mean, my brother is my best friend when, when we had to uh, deal with what was left over from my parents passing away financially, 
uh, and we went to do with the necessary people. Um, both of the people that were there that that watched what my brother and I went through, um, they were quite impressed. They said they weren't expecting that because a lot of times there's a lot of infighting that goes on and arguing that goes, this is mine, no, that's mine, that kind of thing. There was none of that. There was, if you want this, please take it, you know, that kind of thing. Because we're best friends. We, we totally trust each other. I trust him with my life. And I think part of that was the way that we grew up. We grew up um, doing ex- experiencing the same thing together and sharing that. And that helped the bonds. Uh, again, because I, tru- I really do believe that there's just an outright attack on, on the family today. And uh, this is just one of the ways to do it. So I'm ever so grateful for, for people like Victoria. Victoria had the insight to come up with the Fish Florida app. And through the Fish Florida app, we came up with the Fish Florida show. And uh, I think we're going to be doing something visual here <laughs> somewhere down the road. We may be doing. Well, we are. We're going to get we're going to get some production sponsors. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to do a big push with, you know, I've always been, for the most part, boots on the ground with this. So I always show up at the best tournaments, the best events. And we put up a cable. Um, you know, we did the Jimmy Johnson event with Scala. Remember that? Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. those, are, those yep. are just great ways to, to kind of get the word out about the app. And it's not for professional anglers. It's for family. It's, yeah. to, it's for the average person that just wants to go and fish and plan their yeah. fishing or boating or even hunting trips. There's all kinds of resources on it. But the big thing is, is that we need sponsors to make it all happen, to make the show possible. Um, the, the Fish for the Show, um, we want to make that a live show so we can put it on our, our CNT platform. Um, and we need some sp- production sponsors for that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, putting, um, putting a big campaign together. I'm going to ask Robert to maybe help us out and let me do something like a little editorial in his magazine. Cool. Um, so that we can start, you know, putting together some great sponsors. Well, I think he's trying to say something, and, and, and you, between you and me, we're not, <laughs> we kind of watch. I'm so sorry. No, no, that's all right. That's all right. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, not, no, I, I was just going to go back to something you were talking about earlier, which is you can fish everywhere in, in the state of Florida. I don't know if anybody's ever followed him, but there's a gentleman named Noah. He's done some stuff for the magazine before. He has a, on, his, on Facebook, it's called The Bridge Monster, and it's spelled S-T-A-R at the end like star oh monster um yeah. and he has perfected uh bridge fishing wow um he's got some some uh some tips and stuff on there that you know you 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 would want to see if you're cool anybody can fish off bridges there's bridges everywhere in the state oh my goodness so you know that's yeah. something anybody can do and he has perfected it so wow cool well that was one of the places what we would go you know growing up in in the fishing expeditions we did one of my dad's favorite places was to go down to the Keys and uh, to go fishing down in the Keys. In the later years, um, I believe it's Card Sound Bridge. I don't know if it's open anymore, but they had a real low catwalk at the bo- at below the bridge. It wasn't the typical catwalk that was like, you know, 20, 30 feet above the water. This thing was like only 10 feet above the water below the bridge. And uh, that, was, that had become a favorite spot for him. Uh, a lot of great memories there. Uh, and it uh, doesn't cost any. Back then, it cost a dollar, I think. To, because you had to cross the bridge it was a dollar fee to get across i don't know what it is now no telling but i think it's still a dollar yeah. Yeah. so you cross the bridge I don't, do you know if it's open the catwalk still open down there i have no idea i haven't been across that bridge in years <laughs> i haven't either I don't but normally take that road anymore when i go down but. if if it is it's a great place to go fishing uh when the tide's running in, running out i think it was running in i'm sorry when the tide's running in it's a great place to go fishing uh, a lot of different fish there um, but again, yeah, when you're talking about bridges, there's, oh my gosh, bridges everywhere. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to, to uh, you know, I got to go look that up. What would, Give me the name of that again. What, what was his name? It's the Bridge Monstar, and it's it, it's bridge, and the word Monstar is M-O-N-S-T-A-R. Okay, wrote it down so I don't forget it. <laughs> Good. I'm going to go check that out. That's great. You know, you don't have to have an expensive boat, although it's, it's nice to have the boat, but you don't have to have the expense of the boat. You, um, you can just... No, he has a boat, too, but he mm-hmm. uh, he has perfected bridge fishing, so... 
Wow. Wish I knew about him many years ago. <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of bridge fishing back back in the day. It was either bridges or piers. Uh, it wasn't very often we'd go out in a boat. It was either bridges or piers. Uh, Naples, I don't, haven't been there in years either, but it had a beautiful pier at one time, a gorgeous pier. And you could catch, my goodness, all kinds of things off the pier. Uh, Pam, have you are you familiar with uh, Naples? Yeah, I am. Um, we used to. I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, so we used to shoot over there all the time. I don't remember a bridge, but uh, there's a guy over here also, um, Slot Society, where this guy is incredible about fishing off bridges, hmm. land. I mean, he's gotten some of the biggest snook, grouper, wow. uh, kings, uh, and it's all land-based fishing or bridge fishing. So there's a group of people out there that that's exactly what they do, and we have some of the best bridge fishing i think in the state of florida with the uh, skyway the old skyway is now a fishing bridge and we have a oh. few others that are out uh on the gulf that are uh, great piers to fish off of wow what I, what I was asking in naples are you familiar with the pier that's there in, in naples no i'm not i apologize mm-hmm. no, no i'm that's, not no, that's all right I, I haven't been there in years i'm just wondering if anybody's familiar with you know if it's still there or if it's uh if it's, some of this stuff is not even around anymore. <laughs> Hopefully it's still there. It's a great place to go fishing. All right. Well, it's a magic time. That's what happens when we're having fun. It literally flies. Uh, before we go, I want to give uh, Miss Victoria an opportunity. Anything you would like the listeners to hear before you uh, before we go into the break? Well, I just think that the easiest way to tune into the show is to download the Fish Florida mobile <clears throat> app. It's you know you can click on the homepage um, and it goes right to the show. You can click on the Facebook page for the Fish Florida Show, the Contact Us button. You can go to the Fish Florida Show, Show. Click on there. You can go to the Fish Florida Association. We've got a banner at the top. You can click on that. So there's lots of ways to, to, to listen to the show, and, you know, we want to make sure we get the word out on that. And we want to get the word out on, you know, when we're open to the production sponsors and advertisers to jump on board. It's, it's a great way to warm up your brand. Hmm, um, good. So, and I, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to, to come on. Thank well, you so much. That's a two-way street, my dear. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. We'll talk to you soon again. Thank M- you so much. Robert, I appreciate you filling in for me. I know we had... Um, who was that? We had... Uh, s- s- uh, I don't remember the last name. S N. Oh, Sibley, uh, David Sibley, Sibley. and, uh, and uh, his wife, Lindsay. Yeah. We're going to be on. We'll make he's sure we're not uh, feeling well today. He's at the emergency room. Well, now, we'll so. make sure we say a prayer for him to, oh, to feel right. better. Maybe we can okay. get him on uh, next week. But I appreciate you stepping up and, and helping fill in uh, greatly. You know, you're, you're always there for me, and I, and I do appreciate that. So thank you so much. Any parting words before uh, we go on to the break? New magazine will be out on the 1st, www.flfishmag.com. There is a great article written by Captain Ryan Harrington on the World Offshore Fishing Championships down in Costa Rica. Um, well worth reading, and uh, as well as all the other good articles in there. Stephanie Lynn's in there again, and there's some other great stuff. So Great. Catch the magazine. Thank you, Robert. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, parting words for Robert and Miss Pam. Um, he's, I love listening to Robert. He's always got great stories and uh, interesting people his magazine if you guys haven't looked at it it's online it's freaking free it is one of the best out there it's it's always different uh and just interesting facts and photos and stories i love it go reach out go check it out all right well it's that magic moment here we go you're listening to the fish floor of the show Hi guys with your host me. briskella don't go away we'll be right back What's up, Ricky Dillon here at the largest social media gathering in the world. So the internet is an amazing place, but sometimes it can be a not so great place with online bullying and trolling and stuff. Have you ever seen online bullying before? Unfortunately, it's kind of common. Online, people can hide behind the internet. Those comment sections can be a little... Harsh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. Word for it. I've been called many homophobic names. I felt embarrassed. I felt yeah. humiliated. It made me stop liking myself. What if I told you there is something that you can use anytime that you see bullying online that calls attention to it in a nice way? Like, hey, that's not nice. 
I wish that was the thing. It's this. So anytime that you see any kind of hate online, go into your phone, go into the symbol section, post this I, and it says that that's bullying. That's not nice. So would you post this if you saw someone bullying someone? Oh yeah, definitely. It's like a lot more mature way to handle the situation. Find the emoji in your phone, send it to five of your friends, and let them know what it means to be a witness. Go to eyewitnessbullying.org to learn more about the emoji. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Wittick of Bowen Realty. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick of Bowen Realty. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Diane Wittick at Bowen Realty, located in Wellington at Wellington Trace East and Forest Hill Boulevard. 561-247-5478. We just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. homework. He I hates homework. homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E-Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. All right. Welcome back. It is the final episode, the final episode, the final portion of the final episode. Boy, I'm on it. You know what? I'm doing good without coffee. <laughs> There's no telling what I would be saying uh, back in the days before I had the heart surgery, what I'd be saying without coffee. Lord have mercy. I'd probably be doing the Twilight Zone and playing the Twilight Zone music. Uh, so anyway, yes, <clears throat> it's the final portion of the show this morning. If you're just tuning in and you've missed out, uh, there will be an archive up, and you can find the archive at www.fishfloridashow.com. Uh, as well as you can listen to the show from there. You can listen to the show from the uh, app. We have an app that is absolutely free, free download, free to use. The app is a powerful tool that you can have in the palm of your hand, tells you all kinds of information. And uh, this morning, I have the privilege of having Pam Worth. She's one of the top female anglers here in Florida, uh, female kayak anglers, let me point that out, here in Florida. Thank you for joining me, Pam. Greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. I always enjoy coming on the show. Uh, you're so gracious, yeah. gracious with your time. I, yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. 
great guests. I I learn something every time too. It, it's dog. a great time. And and this morning I have Betty Bowman. And Betty is uh, what I love about Betty is um, when I was growing up with all the fishing and everything. I think one of the things that really played a strong part of it was my mom's support of all of this. Betty has an entire system to support women. Um, to get involved in fishing, how from the very basics all the way up to, you know, even cooking them, from what I understand. Good morning, Miss Betty. Good morning. Yeah, you even teach how to cook, right? Yeah, we had a great cooking class. And another thing that we do for women is give them a chance to to do something they wouldn't probably do on their own. Like we just finished our international adventure to Treasure Key in Abaco, Bahamas, and we had a nice group of 17 people, wow. and it was um, such a blast. Wow. Well, so tell me a little bit about how, how did that go? Oh, when we first got there, we um, the first day, we took them to Green Turtle, and uh, uh, they had a nice lunch. We uh, took them by boat. Green Turtle is another island from there, so they had a chance to see that. We had a mixture of Island hopping and fishing. Oh, cool. Um, and then we, we stopped to feed the wild pigs, which was uh, quite the adventure, because there are wild pigs on an island. It's not like a concession with um, people controlling them. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the locals come by boats, too, to, to feed the pigs. They come out in the water, and you swim with them. It was really cool. Um, and then Saturday, we had uh, two boats go offshore fishing. Um, one of the boats caught a nice mahi and a wahoo, the other one um, didn't have a few bites, but um, didn't get them. It was a full moon, hmm. so uh, that's that's how it goes sometimes. It was red hot the week before, and then Sunday we took them over to Guanakee by boat um, to um, Nippers and to explore the island. I saw Miley Cyrus there. Um, <laughs> she she wow. rents a house often in um, Treasure Key, hmm. wow. and uh, you know, and then we had you know nice dinners on the beach. Um, so it's, it was sort of a mix of, you know, in, enjoying the adventure of where we are, which this is something that women like. They don't want to fish every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had some, um, uh, we had uh, three boats go out bone fishing, and they all caught fish. Um, two of the three caught bone fish, and the other ones caught other fish. But for these ladies, it was their first adventure bone fishing. And they asked me, you know, should I try this bone fishing? And I said, it is just an experience to be out there in the malls of Abaco, and you, you're 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 in skinny water. Mm. Uh, you can see the bottom. The bonefish are spooky. They're tough to catch. You got to cast just you know in, in front of their heads, not on them. Um, and and it's you know cross between hunting and stalking. So I'm I'm sure even though they didn't catch a lot of fish, they they know what bone fishing is now and why people like it. Sweet. Go ahead, Pam. I know you're trying to sneak something in there. No, I just think it's incredible on what you do, and that is an adventure that I wanted to come do with you all, but unfortunately it was the same weekend as the ISA. So um, maybe next year I can come do that, because I, I just think that's great. And also, aren't you going to the Bahamas pretty soon? We just got back. That was the, the okay. treasure key trip. That's right, that's right. Abaco, Bahamas. And, you know, I had everything all set up with them. I had really low um, discount um, hotel rates. I had a set rate um, on Bahamas Air because anybody that goes to Bahamas know if, if it's like within a few months of your trip, you could be paying, you know, I've paid up to $800 hmm. for an hour wow. flight on a propeller plane. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, so you have to plan ahead. You know, the transportation, it was a it was a tough trip to put together time-wise. Um you know, because it's not like you go there and they have a package tour of all this, all that. You know, mm-hmm. I had to find my own charters, book the boats, stay on top of them, you know, with, you know, dealing with another country. Yeah. That's not easy. We had, um, we've had uh, kayak tournaments over there and basically had to cancel them just because you couldn't get people to show up at the right time when they said mm. they would, even after you paid them. So you did a great job of getting that all together. Yeah, well, I spend a considerable effort staying on top of them, contacting them multiple times. You know, hey, we're in, you know, yeah, because you, you could book a charter and it just won't show. Um, yep. And it's not just um, Treasure Key. It's 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 just dealing um, dealing with another country. Um, mm. yeah. and most, most of the people are responsible. Mm. Um, wow. Sometimes you don't 
you'll get what you expect. Um, <laughs> so that's, you know, I, I told all the ladies, look, we're going to go with the flow. I mean, there was a lot of laughter, a lot of dancing at the Tipsy Seagull, and a lot of bonding for a group that didn't know each other before they came. They came from all over the country. Wow. And by, by the end, you know, they all had new friends. They're going to go fishing together. So cool. a lot of what we do is more than just the agenda. It's, it's the bonding experience, and, and that's important to women. And I haven't, uh, I don't think anybody's mentioned yet, I haven't mentioned that if the name of this, uh, what do we call it, a, a, a service, uh, what what uh, what you do, what, what would we call that? It's it a service. It's basically yeah. um, adventure planning. An adventure planning. It's called Ladies Let's Go Fishing. You can find her online. Uh, website, Miss Betty, what's the website? It's ladiesletsgofishing.com. And can I talk about what we, have, what we have coming up? Yeah, absolutely. Please. Okay, so next, now I'm working on this. Um, uh, I'm working on the Tampa Inshore Seminar at the Tampa Boat Show. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be there, and I'm so excited about that. Um, and we have Lisa Fitzgerald. We have some other people that are coming. We're going to have the seminar on Saturday, September 7th at the convention center, Tampa Convention Center. Then I'm going to offer some fishing for September 8th for inshore. And after that, uh, then we have October 18th to the 20th. That's our Keys Saltwater Weekend. Uh, that's for with the full day of fishing and then a full day of class and two days of fishing. And let me go backtrack. Uh, the other one I'm working on right now is our June 21st to the 23rd, Keys Fishing and Learning on the Water in Isla Morada. And I planned an extra Keys event for June because I caught this huge mahi, and the mahi are <laughs> very plentiful there. So I want the ladies to experience, you know, mahi at their mm. best. Wow. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Betty. I'm looking forward to getting the updates from you. I really appreciate what you do. Uh, I totally, you know, you can tell. I back it because I love it. I, I totally believe in what you're doing. And getting the ladies involved, it makes it, uh, make it more of a family thing for everybody. And that's right. really and what it's about. let me add one thing because some people don't realize we have charter boats for them. They have to book early. But, you know, you don't have to have a boat to participate in Ladies Let's Go Fishing. Cool. We have charter rates on the website. You can choose from inshore or offshore in the Keys, and you just pay per person. We organize you on the boats, and that's not an easy feat because they have limited capacity, hmm. and uh, but we, we make it work. And I'm happy that you do, and I'm grateful. All right, my dear, I'm out of time for you. I uh, wish you a wonderful day. Thank you again for taking time to share with us and uh, let us know what's going on, and we'll have you back on and, and more updates. Tight lines. Thank you, thank you. All right, Miss Pam, we're at that magic moment. Parting words? Yeah, um, I got two texts from some of my friends. They're on a redfish school, so I am literally in the car <laughs> driving. <laughs> we'll be launching within the half hour. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. You can't keep her. You might be able to hold her on for an hour or so, but you can't keep her forever. She's back out into the water, freaks. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, my friends. For any of the ladies out there, uh, final words to them, please. Look up, Betty. Betty has excellent programs. I've never heard a negative thing about her programs on people who participated. So uh, get out there, tight lines, enjoy the weekend, and God bless. Thank you, my dear. I greatly appreciate it. Wish you a wonderful day. Be safe. I know you will be. And uh, I'm looking forward to having you back on in a week. See you then, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate that, and we'll be back in a week. It has been the Fish Florida Show this morning.